Hello, hello, it is Ruby Burrito, and welcome to an interesting video. So, what I've done today is I've broken down the already existing PvE legendary armor and the newest legendary set to be added to the game. That's going to be the Orin's legendary set. That's the Gen 3 weapon set. The reason that I did that is, for the most part, there's a lot of similarities between the... PvE, PvP, and World v. World armor structure. The PvP and the World v. World armor have the most similarities, and then the raid PvE armor is going to be pretty similar there. So I spent some time looking at what is existing in the game, and I'm going to take some guesses as to how we are going to have to craft the new legendary armor. Now, this is not based on any information ArenaNet gave. This is entirely speculation based on what we already know about Legendary Armor and the most recent Legendary set. That's why I'm bringing in the Orin Legendaries. Even though they are not armor, they are the most recent ones that we have gotten. I'm just jumping back in here after going through the entire video. This is primarily going to be about the existing currencies and materials that are similar to the existing legendaries that we can currently craft so things that we can currently farm for things that we can currently control in our inventories and material storage etc i'm going to touch on what i think is going to be new currencies and new materials but obviously we don't know what those are so i can't really give any advice on how to farm them um, but i just want to make sure i said that right off the bat so, the first thing we're going to look at is the gift one for the raid set. That's the PvE armor set. We have basically three different pieces. We have intermediate crafting materials. That's going to be T6, 5, 4, and 3 of all eight different types. You need the preset amount 100, 250, 50, and 50 to make their individual gifts, such as the gift of fangs, the gift of scales, etc., etc., and you put those together for a gift of condensed might and a gift of condensed magic. Now that's half of the gift here. Then we have mystic clovers and the gift of craftsmanship. The gift of cra craftsmanship is just based off of a, a currency that was part of Heart of Thorns. And that's when this set came out. So we got to have that mindset of the, it's basically the expansion currency, right? and expansion currency. This is something that you got either from doing raids or specific trades with what are called faction provisioners who are effectively just merchants on each of the different maps. So it's a Heart of Thorns currency. If we look at the arena set, it's almost identical. We have the same intermediate crafting materials making the same gift of condensed might and the same gift of condensed magic. And then again, Mystic Clovers and Finally, it's a rare material. So the material for the last one was something specific to the X-Pack. And then since this is not specific to the expansion, but these amalgamated Draconic Lodestones came out during Icebreed Saga and they're relatively expensive. Raid Set Gift 2. Raid Currency. Legendary Insights are a currency that you get for completing raids. The weekly raid boss chests, chests or End of Dragon challenge mode strike mission chests spirit shards obsidian shards and then salvaging ascended materials and fractals there is going to again be a rather similar item for the arena set gift three we can look at gift three here and there's quite a bit of different items come together for this legendary weapon Strong. gift we have the same salvaging ascended uh, salvaging Ascended Gear and Fractals for the Cube of Stabilized Dark Energy. Then we have this section, the Gift of the Mists, which the Cube of Stabilized Dark Energy goes into, where we have the Gift of Battle, Gift of Glory, Gift of War. The Gift of Battle is a World of World Reward track, which I don't imagine the new set will be, because it's supposed to be PvE. And same with the Gift of Glory and Gift of War. Those are Shards of Glory and Memories of Battle. Those are currencies you get from PvP and World of World, and can be bought on the Trading Post. And we've got 100 Mystic Rune Stones, that's just gold. And then the Gift of Research and the Themed Poem are going to be... There's kind of a theme for the Gift of Research. It's a full stack. The Thermal Catalytic Reagents are something that you get just from a crafting vendor. And the Hydro Catalytic Reagents are part of the new Mastery 
system. And finally, you have 250 essences of luck. Then the final item is going to be a combination of story, map completion, scribe or trading post, and then ascended crafting. The T7 weapon part is going to be something that you craft as part of the ascended. Going back to the existing raid set, we have a very simple gift here. And that is the gift of dedication, which is it just boils down to Heart of Thorns map specific currencies. You just play each of the each of the maps in that expansion and you can get everything there. The equivalent for Orin's set is going to be the Gift of Jade Mastery. So the Bloodstone Shard, that's Spirit Shards. The Gift of the Dragon Empire is just the 100 Jade Runestones is going to be meta and map chests. The Chunks of Pure Jade is going to be expansion Breathe. gathering. The Chunks of Ancient Ambergris are going to be fishing. The final one, the Blessings of the Jade Empress, you buy for Imperial Favor, and that's just going to be general expansion currencies. And the Gift of Cantha, the third item is map completion. You get each of those for completing the maps. And the final one is the Antique Summoning Stones. So that's a time-gated rare currency. When it first came out, you could get, I believe, five a week from Livus with a bunch of different items related to, semi-related to, and related to the expansion. Some were gold and, and karma. And then the meta, the Dragon's End meta, allows you to get one. And then you can buy them from trading posts as well as challenge mode strikes and finally we have the precursors so for the raid set you have to do a set of achievements that require you to do a bunch of raids that is also time gated and eventually once you complete the achievement you can craft them so that you can get the other sets and then if we go to Orains, that's where it gets a little bit more complicated. So we were gifted an Orains Legendary if we did certain achievements before the expansion came out. But if you wanted to craft one, we'll start at the bottom. That's the 100 Memories of Orain that comes from a meta event. That's the Dragon's End meta event. Transcendent Crystal. General Materials, Amalgamated Gemstones, and Globs of Ectoplasm. And then again, the Hydrocalactic Reagents. Sorry, hydrocatalytic reagents. Been misreading that for a while now. And the Eldritch Scroll, that's the mastery currency and spirit shards. Then the first two items are specific to the weapon, so they don't 100% relate here, but that's going to be ascended crafting, expansion currencies, and expansion gathering. So that's a lot of information that most people probably have not memorized or anything and I know a lot of people haven't done a lot of raiding so what I did was I broke down and made a new kind of I basically took the raid set and pasted over what I think is going to be the requirements for the new expansion the obsidian armor so with the new set gift one we're looking at the same intermediate crafting materials that's been Consistent across Gen 2 and Gen 3 Legendary Weapons, and all th I believe all three sets of the Legendary Armor. Mystic Clovers, again, that was the same across both, and I'm going to assume that it's an expansion-based rare material. Either something for completing meta events, or just a, a new rare item, or a new rare material that they have added. Gift 2. Again, this one was pretty similar, so I'm going to assume we're going to need a cube of Stabilized Dark Energy, 50 Obsidian Shards, and then Spirit Shards for the Eldritch Scroll, and then an X-Pack Currency. It's probably, it again, could be anything from a very difficult to get and time-gated X-Pack Currency to something more general that, unfortunately, when I can't really guess too deeply. I would say it's going to be time-gated based on what it was for the raid set, because it was weekly raid boss chests or strike mission chests, which again are weekly based, but they could do a 180 on that. Gift three, 
Because this is an expansion set, I'm going to bet that this is going to be a combination of map completion and map specific currencies. I don't think it's going to be as simple as the gift of Cantha for the arena set, which was just do the map completion. That was part of a larger gift, but I do think that it's going to be a little bit more difficult than what it is for the raid set, which was just get currencies from the different maps. So I'm going to project you have to do all the metas I, for each of the maps. I want to say that they were adding four, sorry, three new maps. Uh, so probably three different metas and then maybe some of the, frac the strikes, not the fractals, will be involved in that. Now, the final item is going to be the Precursor. So I have both of these here, and I have both of these here for a reason. The reason is, I think it's going to be a combination. I know that might sound like a cop-out answer, but I do believe that the Precursor should have some level of achievement tied to it. Not as in-depth as the Envoy achievements, but something that allows you to unlock the, uh, the, whole, uh, the whole ability to make the set. So it'll probably allow you to unlock all of the, the recipes that you need for the full set of armor and then also a separate achievement potentially for the recipes for the precursor. I do believe we're going to have to craft the precursor. So I have the Oreen section back here. I do think there's going to be a final meta event that's useful for most useful like we saw in End of Dragons. The Dragons End meta is arguably the most valuable in terms of your gold output and then again some combination of of expansion gathering general expansion currencies probably not the ascended crafting it's probably going to leave that out um but spirit shards mass recurrencies um things like that without knowing what the meta events are going to be or what the currencies we're going to see are going to be. It's difficult to say exactly how to get the currencies, but basically where, where you see expansion currency, currency or expansion gathering, it's basically just going to be play the maps, do the metas, do achievements, explore an event, and you should be able to make some good progress towards those items. But I do think that with this framework, we should be able to guess and arg I, I believe I can argue that based on the historical legendary armor and weapons, we are looking at something pretty similar to what I have here. Most notably, the gift one that I have here, I do really believe that we're going to see something that requires those intermediate crafting materials, and then something that uh, has the Mystic Clovers as well. They've had Mystic Clovers and everything, and also they're going to have a final item there that's probably just going to be a rare currency tied to the expansion. So that pretty much just wraps up my thoughts on what the Legendary Armor is going to take. Uh, I would suggest starting to save up those intermediate crafting materials, Mystic Clovers, any type of rare, any type of rare material, um, Spirit Shards for sure, Obsidian Shards. Basically, I would set aside material like you are crafting either an arena legendary or a a raid set and with the exception of the end of dragons materials and then as soon as the as soon as the expansion drops you're likely going to see with the the new system of daily weekly and release based achievements we're going to have probably some we know we're going to have some currencies related to that system, and I do believe, based on how they handled End of Dragons, that it's going to be heavily tied into the legendary armor. So that just about wraps it up. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate all the support. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to give me the most support, or come hang out in on over on Twitch while I'm streaming live. And we'll see you guys in the next one.